We have two more parent functions to discuss, and then we're going to move on to some crazy graphing stuff. All right, so right now we're looking at the cube root function. f of x is equal to the cube root of x. You might think that his shape is similar to the square root function that we just did. I'm not sure how similar it is, but we do need to be selective about the values that we plug in. For example, I don't want to just plug in like 2, because the cube root of 2 is not fun. But what I will plug in will be a negative 8. See, if I plug in negative 8, 8 is a perfect cube, and I can do negatives inside the cube root, so I end up with negative 2. Negative 1 is another perfect cube, and I get negative 1. 0 is almost always a good choice for us. The cube root of 0 is 0. The cube root of 1 is 1, and of course the next perfect cube is 8, and the cube root of 8 is 2. These are key points that you need to know, you need to have memorized, so that when it comes to graphing later on, it's going to be a simple thing for you. So I get negative 8, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 8, 2. So these points are very similar to what we saw for the cubing function just oriented a little bit differently. Now for the cubing function, you were flat at the origin. For the cube root function, you're going to be vertical here for just a little bit, and then you're going to curve out like this, and you're going to curve down and to the left like that. So that's what your cube root function looks like. Now let's talk about your domain. As you see here from the picture, this guy goes all the way left, all the way right, so his domain doesn't have restrictions like what we saw for the square root function. So this is going to be all real numbers. Well, what about the range? You might say, oh, it just goes from negative 2 to 2. But this guy is going to get higher and higher. It's just going to take a while because it takes going all the way out here to 27 to go up to the next unit of 3. But it is going to get there because when you have infinity, you have all the time in the world. So the range is going to be all real numbers. All right, now let's talk about one of my favorite guys, and that is the absolute value function. So remember, we've talked about absolute value. We talked about how it measures the distance from zero. And it always returns a non-negative value. So if I take our default numbers, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2, of negative 1 is positive 1, and then you get 0, 1, and 2. Remember that the absolute value doesn't change the sign, it returns the positive part of the number. So let's plot these guys. We've got negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2. If I keep going here, the absolute value of 3 is 3, of 4 is 4, and on the other side, the absolute value of negative 3 is 3, of negative 4 is 4, and so on. So, we end up with this pattern. On each side of the absolute value, it is a linear shape. The function itself is not linear, but it does tend to take on these linear tendencies, which means you can almost look at this and discuss the slope because the angle on each side is going to be the same if you can identify the slope here which is up one over one on the other side it's up one to the left one so it's just a slight little reversal but it's still linear all right so let's see what is my domain well this guy goes all the way left all the way right i don't have any square roots i don't have any fractions so this should be all real numbers. And what about your range? Well, notice your range isn't all real numbers. He bottoms out here at 0, and then he just goes up. So from 0 to infinity. And there is your range. So we've discussed now the six parent functions that we have, at least for right now. We're going to be adding more later. What we want to do in the next series of videos is we want to look at well, how can we change the shapes? How can we move these guys around? How can we stretch them? How can we compress them and just reflect them, uh, put them in a different location? And it's really not too bad. You just have to know your key points and graph it from there. 
what you're going to find out is that we don't recreate a new set of t-tables every time. So stick around. We're going to try to make it as easy as possible. Just trust me.